What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a colony survival game called Grim Realms. This one used to be called Grim Knights 2 and was meant to be the sequel to Grim Knights 1, which was kind of like an underground cult colony survival game that I covered way back in the day about a zombie apocalypse where you're holding off zombies and you're in a medieval society and you're like building up walls and you have longbowmen and things of that nature. At the time, I felt like this game kind of, or I guess this this game series, kind of slid under the notice of the internet, but it did seem to develop a little bit of a cult following over time, which surely enough enabled Grim Realms to be made. Today, we're going to be taking a look at one of the later builds of the early access of Grim Realms. It's in .8.4 right now, which is getting closer to 1.0, definitely creeping that way. And this is a game where you take a small squad of clandestine operators out into the middle of the hinterland nowhere to find an artifact to stop the undead horde. So the previous game, you were just trying to survive as long as possible. In this game, humanity has lost. The zombies won. And so now we're looking for a Hail Mary magical artifact that's just going to make them all fall over and stop attacking us. Along the way, you will be doing research, moving up tech trees, you will be learning how to manufacture more and more sophisticated weapons to fight the undead, there will be events, you will be attacked by wolves, you will be attacked by bandits, you will have all kinds of things that you have to deal with in between the undead waves. And honestly, I think the game is possessing of kind of an early 2012 indie game charm that's missing from a lot of indie games nowadays. Like, indie games have become big business, and big publishers have slid right in and made, like, subsidiaries that are owned by the big AAA company, but they can also give you a layer of plausible deniability uh, to be like, oh, it's an indie game. No, that's not a publisher. So th this reminds me of the old titles that used to come out in, like, 2010, 2011, where it's definitely a product of one guy, and that imbues it with a sort of charm. It's not a perfect game, it's not the best colony survival game you're ever gonna play in your life, but it does have some interesting aspects that I think will appeal to fans of the genre, if you can get around kind of some of the weird UI choices and some of the wonkiness with the AI. So let's dive on in. This game is available down below in the description. You can go find the link to the early access. We'll go ahead and generate a big old world here. Down there, you can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream on the day this video goes live. We'll probably make a colony on Twitch and play for three or four hours so that you can see what the game looks like a little bit further back on in. This is a cool map layout. I dig it. This is a different looking map than I've ever had before. Uh, so the game procedurally generates a map. Normally there's background music, but I sat here browsing on the internet and letting the game run, and it ran out of background music, and I didn't notice it until I was three minutes in. There is background music here normally, though. This is kind of like my fault for not filming the video properly. Uh, we got two continents. I've never seen it generate like this before. Normally, it's like one big Pangea continent with maybe like a peninsula going on. We've got like a little Greenland over here. We've got like a northern continent, a southern continent. Kind of cool. I like this map, actually. Aesthetically, it looks nice to look at. But not only does it generate a map, it generates a full list of cultures that all characters in this game will be from one of these seven cultures. And different cultures value different things and get angry about different things and have different morals and different ethics. Things of that nature. I don't know how much it matters. I've played for probably two or three hours when I was testing the game out. It didn't seem like it mattered altogether that much, but maybe I just kind of missed the way in which it mattered. It, it seemed to affect people's stats for sure, but I don't think I ever had somebody be like, I'm not joining a colony with your kind. Now let's find a place to start on out. One thing I wish that it would do, so there's this idea of accessibility, which is kind of like the difficulty of the game, I guess, if you wanted to think about it that way. But accessibility determines how easily people can come to your colony. If your accessibility is really high, uh, you get lots of events, and you get lots of people coming to join. If your accessibility is low, you're like out in the middle of nowhere and nobody cares. And so I do wish that they would put population centers around the map, like cities basically, like major Los Angeles style cities, Los Angeles, Paris, London, like big cities as an example. And those would kind of determine the radius that you could put your base in and help you figure out the accessibility. Because while placing my town, I found that I basically just click around a lot until I find one that's got okay accessibility I guess for me personally I can't really stand being landlocked it's like an odd thing about me I, I've lived next to the ocean my entire life so not being near an ocean just makes me feel weird and claustrophobic like I need to be able to go five minutes that way and see the ocean all right 
It's just, it's this weird thing that happens to you when you grow up in an oceanic place where there's, like, constantly shipping boats and there's constantly, like, ocean and, like, delta. It's like, you just get used to there being water somewhere nearby. I can't imagine being landlocked. I don't know. Like, lots of people are landlocked. But, like, for me, it makes me feel, like, nervous, I guess. Like, it just makes me feel weird. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make myself a crest here. All right, made my stuff. Uh, it looks like we've got our faction all nice and made. There's loads of options here. Like, seriously, there's a huge amount of things you can do with your personal crest. It looks like we have a builder, we have a miner, we have a soldier, and we have an inventor. We may want to re-roll that a little bit just to get a better spread of people. Let's see here. So we've got an inventor again. We've got a miner again. We've got a handyman. That's pretty nice. And then a researcher. Everybody can kind of do everything. And based on like their racial background too, they may end up, or their cultural background, they may end up getting other bonuses that we can't see for right now. This is a pretty old colony. We've got a lot of people over the age of 40, but like, eh, what does recommended members do? Oh, it just guarantees you'll have a balanced start just in case you're one of those madmen. You know, that likes to just roll random and have entire skill categories that are missing. Here we are! Your faction has arrived and your adventure begins. I gotta disable the tutorial first. I disable you. There we go. Tutorial has been disabled. Welcome. This is a 2D colony builder, as you can see. Uh, we've got the ocean on one side of us, which is really cool. Absolutely love that. We've also got a passage to the south. So that's good. What's on the north side of us right now? Anything? Okay. So that side of us, we're all good and squared away. We're going to need to make some decisions here. Uh, this is a nice little precipice. I, I like this little crag that we're up on top of right now. Enemies won't be able to reach us from either side, in all honesty. This may actively work out. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to need is we're going to need to put a ladder right there and a ladder right there so that people can get down. And as you can see, they're going to get to work. The game uses a very simple art style uh, that'll remind you of something like Super Brothers Swords and Sorcery or something. You know, there's a bunch of games out there that have used kind of like this slightly more sheltered, I guess, slightly more detailed stick figures. Uh, but this game does actually show every single piece of gear on your character. Once you get further on into the game, some characters will have leggings, knee-high boots with metal plates on the knees. They'll have, like, a shoulder pad on one side with chainmail underneath. Your guys do end up looking quite different as you get further on into the game. But the first thing we need to do is we need to start chopping down some trees. So let's go ahead and get after it. That's going to give everybody a task to get done. The UI in this game is very simple. Top left, you've got your population list with priorities. Right here, you've got your inventory summary. Right here, you've got your storyline summary. You've got harvesting. You've got different types of buildings. You've got farming and planting orders for, you know, growing your crops and surviving and eating and all that kind of stuff. And then there's another place over here where you can set up people's work priorities. And as we start developing more advanced supply chains, I'll start worrying about that. Everybody gets to the chopping. That's an altar. One of the first things we need to do in the game is investigate that altar because it's going to give us a rough direction that we need to dig in because this is a downwardly focused game. This is a game about deep tunnel mining uh, underneath like a tower on the surface, basically. There's all of our wood. Looks fantastic. I'm going to need both of these carts to move somewhere more palatable. So we'll go ahead and have somebody move the carts over to there. And as you can see, they'll pick up the cart and they'll carry it off to that side. Perfect. There you go. Do I only have one guy that's willing to haul? Ripperoonies. It holds 75 space. All right, let's start building a building here. At the beginning of the game, we've only got two types of buildings that we can build, wood and daub. Wood is very flammable, so keep that in mind. If you decide to build a place that's wood, uh, bad things can happen. I recommend maybe retrofitting your wood building as soon as possible so as to avoid, you know, undead-related... Uh, flammability problems and as you can see they're all gonna get to work once this is done being constructed this game does use clumping you can attach pretty much any building wall part to any building wall part you want to attach it to and you can build as tall as you want to you can build as short as you want to you can have no base on the surface at all and just build everything underground it's totally your call from what I've seen so far the game doesn't really punish you for building underground most games will give you some kind of penalty for building underground, like Tunnel Dweller 
or something like that. This game, oddly enough, does not do that. And I think that's actually good. Uh, I like building underground from time to time. I don't always build underground because it's kind of stereotypical. But every now and again, dude, you want to make a dwarf base. It is what it is. Apparently, I need dirt for the thatched roof as well. So we are going to have to start digging it downwards. I'll put some wooden stairs maybe right here. I don't know if that's going to undermine the building that I just built, but we'll have that go down to like right there. At least have somebody get on top of it. I'm usually kind of like hesitant to go super crazy with the building. Just due to the fact that like I, I tend to have dirt. Sorry, my thought process completely died on me right there. Dirt, as you dig, tends to overload your entire storage medium, but we need the dirt to put the roof on here. So there we go. The roof has been put on, and we've got ourselves a shelter. The other thing that we're going to need is actually, like, beds so that people can rest effectively. And I think having beds on this level is perfectly fine. So we'll just call this first level, like, a little flop house, basically, where everybody lives at. And we'll put some interior stairs behind it so that we can build this tower upwards at some point. I don't know how much straw I have. I do have enough straw, good. Sometimes I'm a little bit low on straw and that kind of gets in the way, but it seems like we have straw going for us right now. The other thing we're gonna wanna do is chop down some trees and get some crops going, maybe in this open area over here. I think it wouldn't be the worst idea to plant vegetables, to plant some extra grasses for when we run out of straw. And then I think that should be fine for now. We can't plant medicinal herbs or anything like that just yet, but. It's the next day, and alas, it built all my beds on the outside the house because I forgot I had the interior-exterior thing not checked. So that's going to be my mistake of the day. The next thing I need to do is I need to kind of like hollow out a workshop where people can start building things. And since we're not going to have room for it inside this upper central area, I'm going to do it underground for right now just to make things a little bit more nice and clean. We don't have any animals around, which kind of sucks. Some maps have, like, a lot of rabbits and a lot of wildlife. It's going to be difficult for us to get leather. So I think what we want to start with is maybe we want to leapfrog leather altogether. And I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but that was pretty awesome, right? Instead, we're going to try to leapfrog leather. The reason being uh, that we can go straight to chainmail, I think, because we do have metal nodes and things on the surface. Go ahead and get that rock out of the way, too. I think I should be able to fit, like, a, a blacksmithing assembly down in here. Let me get my beds rebuilt too. There we go. Two, three, four, space for stairs and a fifth bed. There we go. So we'll put stairs right here that go upwards so that I can make this a little bit taller. We have our dirt. I don't know if I can retrofit all this into daub. It does take straw to retrofit the entire building into daub, which means that it doesn't burn very much. But... It's very expensive to build daub as of right now because it's going to use up a lot of our straw supply. Once our crop comes in, we might be okay. But for now, let's get some workbenches going. So we are going to need a storage room. And in fact, I think this actually works pretty well for a storage room. So if I can fit stockpiles in here, I'm gonna. So there we go. We've got our stockpiles. And then from here, we're going to want another stairwell that just kind of goes down and attaches to another workshop where this will be the bottom floor. And what we'll try to do is, I'm gonna try to plan this such that we don't get any of our villagers trapped. I don't know if I've trapped a villager thus far while playing the game. Is he gonna go do it? Sometimes they get a little bit weird about building ladders and stuff. You guys can allow hauling on, like, all that stuff. I don't mind. The dirt, however, we probably don't want to haul for the moment. Otherwise, we're going to end up with full storages everywhere. Good. We kind of just want to hammer this down one section at a time. That's pretty much it. There you go, boys. Put your backs into it. Oh, we found rabbits. Nice. Well, that'll be good. Many rabbits, in fact. I would say, so we've got our workshop happening up here, not enough resources, we don't have any wood. Oh, we're out of wood, that's why they're not building the ladders. Okay, let's go chop down some more trees then. And there goes the final tile. We've got the beginnings of our workshop started out. First thing we need to do is go blip blap all these little rabbits though, these rabbits got to go. Hopefully we spawned in with somebody that has a bow, if not, this is gonna be 
a tiny bit of a headache. Ian, what are you doing over here? Resting. Uh, all these rocks and stuff you see in the background, they're not just there for decoration. You can harvest them for resources. Or, alternatively, uh, you are allowed to sit on them and use them as a place to, like, eat your meal and whatnot, too. Which I think is a really cool feature. Uh, we're going to have to get some stairs going right there, going down. Perfect. And then we'll get that iron node out of the way, and then we'll be ready for a workshop down here. So I'll probably start off with a... We'll get a research table, I think, is a good place to start. We will get a smelter, but we don't have the stone for it. But we may get the stone out of that node over there. We'll get a sewing station. We will get a leather working station. This actually can go underground. Good. I'm glad to see that. And then I don't know, maybe just a woodworking bench. There we go. So that's going to be our first little... Our first little workshop, and it's right next to the storage, which is going to minimize transit time. We may be able to, I mean, honestly, do I even need those stairs right there? Everything's underway. We've awoken on the next day, and it is a flurry of industrious actions taking place inside of our colony. Alas, the trees appear to have died on us, so I'm probably going to go have to, how many woods do I have left? Do I have any woods left? I have five woods left. Yeah, we're going to have to go knock down some trees, unfortunately. Don't want to. Going to have to. I can also send somebody to decipher that, but I'm kind of scared to do it until we're appropriately armed. Your guys don't spawn in with a whole lot of, like, badass gear to fight the enemy with, and so we need to bring that up a little bit. Yeah, I was going to say, get that iron right there. That's going to be hugely useful. Iron's kind of hard to come by, so the more iron we have, the happier a camper I shall be. Over here, make ingots infinitely, please. And so we can set up that work order. Over on this side, I do need to go through my characters and figure out what they have and what they don't have. So he's got clothes on, and he's got no weapons whatsoever. She's got a bow and a knife, bow and a knife, no weapons whatsoever. All right, so our first task is going to be two clubs two shields. That's it. We want two guys to be able to fight. And so you can see our blacksmith is going to come down here and he's already throwing ingots inside the furnace to get things going. The final layer is being mined away on that side, so that's good. I don't actually know how to get rid of stairs. There we go. And I said, there's got to be a button around here somewhere, right? There's like no way that there's not a button for dismantling stairs. We're also going to need some interior stairs right there to go up to the next level. And I'm going to put another level on the tower because I'd like to be able to fight from an elevated position when the enemy shows up and just fire arrows at them since we've been blessed with like this really tactically relevant location to defend ourselves in. I'd also like to put in a couple things for storing food, I guess. call it crates. I think crates will store our food. So we'll go ahead and throw some crates in there, I think. That way they can pick up like the bunny the bunny meats and all that kind of stuff and throw them in there. Or, you know, just fill them up with dirt. That's also a perfectly valid option and I'm not mad at you whatsoever. Perfectly valid option. Not upset. Just a little disappointed. We do have some more workshops to get in. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do another one on that side. And this side will probably be the larger stations like the tannery, uh, the blacksmithing, all that good stuff. And then we'll start putting together some serious gear. Everybody does have skills in this game. Every character has a ton of skills, in fact. Uh, everything from melee fighting on into hunting on into social skills, actually. And how good they are at convincing other people to join your society or resolving conflict when people roll through and want to act like turd Fergusons. It's up to you when and where and how you want to deploy those things. Uh, leather working station needs to be outside. Blacksmithing station? Actually, that may not need to be outside. It might just be that rock right there that caused a problem. Let me go mine that rock real quick. Are we all done with the work order? No, we still have two clubs left to go. All right, that's fine. Next day, and we've got all of our crafting going up right now, so we should be in good shape from here on in. I'm going to go ahead and tell them to haul that wood right there, and then we're just going to produce leather 
Indefinitely, people will just go grab stuff and make it happen, but this is the point at which we want to start specializing people according to how good they are at the tasks that they're actively doing. So for example, tailoring, it looks like he's our best tailor, followed by Amelia, and so we will disable everybody else from tailoring if they have bad skills. As far as blacksmithing goes, it looks like they are also our huckleberry. As far as building goes, actually, it looks like most of our guys... Yikes. Okay. Most of our work is coming from the same couple people, from what it looks like to me, so this is gonna be a little bit tight. People are gonna have to figure it out, but we'll work it out. Alright, well the leather's being made over here. He's uh, diddling the old leather rack, making the whole thing happen. Once we've got enough leathers laying around, we can use the leather working bench to build armors. We can also use the blacksmithing over here to make weapons, and we can use blacksmithing to make armor as well. But be forewarned, there's two halves to this station. I didn't notice that you could click on this half or this half for probably a good 45 minutes. I, I was really asking myself, like, do I need to research metal armor? And then I accidentally clicked on it and saw that pop up for a second. I was like, yo, hold up. Hold up. I believe we're probably also going to want... We don't have a cooking station yet, do we? Yeah, we don't. Well, here, just put the cooking station right there, then. I don't mind it being on the outside of the house. We also need to pick some research we want to do. First good research, smithing recipes, probably a pretty solid one. From there, getting herbs so that you can heal yourself is probably a good idea. And then after that, I'd probably get longbows since we're planning on fighting from... Did they build those stairs on the outside the house or on the inside the house? Very difficult to tell right now. Hmm. I have so many questions. Uh, let's go ahead and convert this whole thing into mud daub before we go any further, too. I'm just, like, terrified of getting lit on fire, man. So terrified of being lit on fire. The good news is they will reuse the materials that they already used if they're available to build up the house. So it's not going to cost us, like, an enormous amount to mud daub this up. But if you... Oh, something's happening, huh? The undead are attacking. Not great. Probably a good time to uh, dismantle the stairs right there. Somebody should probably go do that, like right this second. And then once thou hast disassembled... No, don't go to the bottom of it. Disassemble it from the top, my man. Oh, that's not going to work. Okay, we got a problem then. Uh, where are my archers at? So which of you are archers? You've got a bow... And the other one's got a bow. It doesn't look like a huge invasion of undead because it's just like the first one. So it should be alright. You've also got a bow. Alright, here's your job. You guys are going to stand over here. And if you see something that looks like a zombie, shoot it in the face till it dies. They should have range on them pretty soon. I may actually build an archery tower on the edge of this, too, that they can get on top of to protect themselves. You guys gonna shoot? It would be smart to shoot. There you go. Good job, boys. Well done. I free you. Uh, go back and do whatever the hell you want now. Yeah, that stairwell's gonna have to stay there now that I've built it, unfortunately. Bummer. This little guy's AI appears to be freaking out too. It's okay, buddy. We'll come we'll come rescue you in a minute. You wanna come do that task, man? Just so he doesn't like. Nope, come back. Come back and do the task. Yep, come back and do the thing that I told you to do. There you go. Now you can be free and go do whatever you want. Well, the next day is upon us and we need to decide what we want to do. I think it's a really good idea considering we just had an invasion to go get that copper over there and start smelting it off and turning it into useful things. I'd like to have two hand axes made for the people that are maybe not quite there yet. I'd also, how close is our research right now? Like, are we actually good at research with anybody? Research. Who's my best researcher? Okay, so you guys don't research, but we'll put Ian on it and he'll be the guy that kind of like knocks it out. I don't know how good he is at it. How good are you at this? Let me see your skills. 
inside of your ski. Oh, you got five in researching. Okay, so you're kind of like dope at research, man. One of the better researchers I think I've started with while testing this game. But as you can see, they are forging our new weapons. And once the research is done, I'm going to make four longbows and everybody's going to have longbows. I don't think I have anybody that's like crazy good at fighting. So Ian is apparently our best guy at like the, the melee combat. Does everybody have zero? No, he's the worst. Okay, I just don't know how to read things. So Ian's bad. It put him at the top of the list. I don't know. Well, I guess those aren't priorities. I guess those are just their skill levels. Well, that's really helpful. I've been reading this complete. I've been using this menu over here nonstop. All right. Well, never mind then. I'm just really dumb. Brody is our best fighter. So Brody... I don't know if you would love to have a decent copper hand axe, but you know what, man? Go, yeah, go grab one from the stockpile. And as you can see, it adds a little axe to his outfit, which is kind of cool. Now that I've got everybody equipped, including the people that are extra strength bad at their jobs, uh, we want to learn longbows, I guess, so that we can hit a little bit harder from a little bit longer of a range. I'll probably build like a two space tower right here that goes up and like a two space tower over here once I break these down. So we have like a central place that we live inside of and two towers, one on each side so we can fire down on people uh, that we don't like with projectiles of death. All right, so they're smelting off copper over there. Is anybody skilled enough to actually make chainmail just yet? Doesn't look like it. When it comes to leather working, do I have enough leather to do anything worthwhile? I do not have enough leather to do anything worthwhile, so we're gonna have to find us. We're, we're gonna have to find ourselves some more bunnies, all right? We're gonna go ahead and keep on mining then, because on a map that doesn't have a lot of surface bunnies, the best place to find them is these little holes in the walls that you'll. Oh my goodness! Okay, let's not mine that then. Oh, I actually don't know how I want to do this. I don't want somebody to fall in there though. Guess I'll tell him to knock down those three first. Knock that down. Knock that down. Okay, it worked the way that I wanted it to. I was a little bit nervous about how that was going to play out. I didn't want to get guys trapped in here. Can you guys get that from right there on the floor where you're at? Is that reachable? It is, in fact, reachable. Good. That's so what I'm actually going to need from you now. Is to put the dirt back. I know that sounds like a really dumb order, but it's going to keep things more organized. So just like take a minute and all that dirt that you just shoveled out, shovel it back in. Dude, this guy is a research god. He's like flying through the research right now. I love it. You can get guns in this game. You can get like arquebuses and like firebombs and actually do like the full on like fusilier thing where you can like throw grenades while wearing like a long tall cap. I don't know. I like that kind of stuff. Some people might not like that kind of stuff, but I always find, like, Napoleonic stuff to be, like, rad, like, colonial stuff. Like, things with flintlock rifles and whatnot are always fun to me. I made a couple maces for people that may not be very good with certain things. So maybe I'll just have them equip the mace. Yeah. I mean, the mace does 128 damage. That's not bad. Where's my fourth guy? Ian, I got bad news for you, buddy. I need you to go and grab... Oh, he's not done with it yet. It hasn't been blacksmithed. Okay, you can make another mace. It's going to be fine. What? What do you want? Research finished longbows. Good. Does that go from the woodworking bench? It does. 300 base damage. Not bad. Okay, yeah, give me two longbows for my archers then. I've got two people that have... Decent longbow skill, so if you can get somebody over there to woodwork it, I'm fine with it. From there, how are we looking on supplies? I got no straw left, but then again, I haven't harvested my crops yet either. So we'll go ahead and harvest some crops over here. Actually, I did that the wrong way. I want them to replant them after they take them down. I don't want that. There we go. If you hold down shift... Uh, it'll tell them to replant the thing after they harvest it. It's a useful little tooltip that, like, maybe people may not know about. But there is, like, a, a pull and replant option in this game. 
However, how am I looking on food? Because, like, they never built... It's because I don't have the iron. Yeah, I suppose that makes sense. Okay. And I think it would be fine. If we started just doing some, some digging exploration in a direction. Just see if there's any ore around here. Because we seem to be really low on ore. We seem to be really low on leathers. We've got just enough ore to get ourselves started. But our characters are very fragile. They die very easily. So, like, we want to get, like, armor matters in this game. That's that's the point that I'm trying to get across, is that, like, a guy in chainmail takes way less damage than a guy that's just, like, in a tunic. In some games, you don't see that turnaround. So, like, it's not, like, a huge priority that you start manufacturing, like, a flak vest or a huge priority that you start making, like, some lamellar right this second. It's nice, but it's not, like, required. This game, you probably want to get people into armor about as soon as possible. It's a it's a good idea to have everybody tacked out, either in leather lamellar or in chainmail, pretty quickly before the threats start to escalate, because, like, little things like zombies, those don't hurt like crazy. But what are you going to do when the wolves get here? You know, like, wolves hit like a truck if you don't have armor on. So you definitely want to have armor by the time wolves get here. Otherwise, you're just going to take some L's, and there's just, you're going to lose people, and your productivity is going to go down, and also you're going to lose friendship and be depressed. What was that? Oh, do we have, like, a fire risk or something because it's raining? The rain graphic in this game looks really grid-like. Could be better, like, angling it would make it look a little bit nicer, I think. It's very, it's very grid-like when you're playing on a high speed. Might be falling too fast and too grid-like as well. Huh. Oh, good. We found some things. So an ancient undeciphered statue. Sure, nothing bad ever happens when I fiddle with ancient undeciphered statues. That's not going to have any consequences. Oh, the lightning striking the ground and it's making little craters. Okay. That's why it keeps giving me a little fire tool tip. I was starting to get nervous about, like, where is this fire that it keeps saying there is? It's because it's raining. The lightning is shooting the ground, blowing out a big, like, crater, causing a fire, but it gets instantly put out by the rain, so... Nothing actually to worry about. Do I just... Let's decipher it. Let's, let's do the surface one first. We'll dig down this way. We'll get all of our copper. We'll get all of our iron. And then from there, we'll decipher that one, maybe? I don't know. Some of these are really dangerous to decipher. It kind of depends. You can put the game on 12x speed uh, when people are sleeping. That's a really, really nice quality of life feature. I'm the kind of person that plays everything on like 3x speed when I play RimWorld or any other colony builder. And so having some settings that are up above that make me really happy. I love this digging animation right here. Like the mining animation looks so fluid for like pixel art. I don't know. It looks very smooth. Like they got that smudge right there or whatever that's called when it swings. Got it looking real good. So what I prefer to do up here is I'm gonna add like a little, little storage area on that second floor full of like crates, just some stairs going up and a whole bunch of crates, I guess. Eventually we'll rebuild this with stone just to make it extra durable and non-burnable. But for now, I think we have enough iron ingots after finding that little tiny iron vein to build our stove so that we can actually cook food from here on out too. And as you can see, they're adding in another layer to the building. If you wanted to watch it from the outside, they'll add little... I don't even know what these are called, like these little crossboards for like that Danish style of building or whatever. I don't, I don't know what they're called, but anyways, you'll see them adding in the crossboards and making the outside look all nice too. There's our stove. I'm going to tell them to basically in perpetuity cook anything that we have on hand because you never know. I don't know who our best cook is. It looks like in this case it's Ian, so there you go. We'll put those two on cooking As you can see, Ian's getting to work, and he's cooking us some food. We'll see how good he is at it by what he produced. He probably did vegetables. So fresh vegetables. He did tasteless grilled vegetables. How's your skill, buddy, at cooking? How's, how's the skill? Is this a situation? He's got three in cooking. I was going to say, is this a situation where everybody has zero and you have one? <laughs> Glad this next section of house is going up, though, too. Give us a lot of good areas to store, like, food and whatnot for later. Especially once they get the roofs and everything in. Apparently, they studied this, and it says, What was thought to be poetry actually turns out to be a map that points to another puzzle. We should probably further study it, then. 
Sounds like it's gonna be you, dude. You just left the pot on all night. This is a fire hazard. Right now, Smokey the Bear is weeping. Well, everybody's all long bowed up, and everybody that needs a weapon has a weapon. Do I have anybody that can actually make like chain? Oh, I do. I can make chain mail now. Okay, well that's our next task. Let's get at least two people into chain mail. So that's ten, and two people into helmets, I guess. Because we have two melee guys and we have two ranged guys. And so the melee guys are going to have to hold the line while the archers are firing arrows at everything that moves with their longbows. It is going to take a while, though, for us to get that blacksmithing done, unfortunately. Like, this is going to be kind of a long process. All right, one of our chain mails is done. I'll show you what that looks like. So Ian's got a sword and board, right? Ian's going to need some armor. I think, I think... Ian's probably gonna need some protection. There you go. And now he's got his chainmail on, which actually breaks apart his outfit a little bit better, and you can actually see the fact that he's wearing like a poncho and some other stuff that he's got on. You're gonna be our next guy to get some chainmail. And hopefully we get a vendor soon that comes through, like a merchant, so we can sell off some of our surplus stock and sort of like dedicate ourselves to a better future. We got a lot of people standing around. Maybe... Oh, I don't know. Maybe start just mining a shaft that way if you've got the free time to do it. Amelia's tired from a day spent smithing the finest metal armor that will protect our warriors. She's not done yet, though. Okay, so yeah, we were mining, and now there's a whole bunch of rats that are now attacking my people. Luckily, my longbowman was already in position to deal with that. How's your health going right now? How hard do they hit? Well, it's a really good thing you were here, man, in chainmail. If it was anybody else, they probably would have got mauled. That's going to give us some more leather to play around with, though, which is going to increase our armor supply. As you can see, is bleeding. Uh, everybody can handle bleeds in this game. They're not that big of a deal. It's just you can't deal with a bleed while you're in combat. And so once they get out of combat, you should see everybody kind of deal with it. Yeah, everybody harvest these, would you? I don't know how many of them are over there, but we could definitely use more leather. I'm not super stoked about the rat stew we're going to be eating for the next couple days, but... Actually, it looks like they don't drop leather. Yes, they do. Never mind. A giant rat skin. Apparently, it's quite fragile, though, so it probably doesn't make the best tier armor, would be my guess. I need... Sir... Walk over to here, and then I free you. There we go. Uh, selectivity can be a little bit of a problem in this game. Like, grabbing the unit that you want to grab when there's multiple, like, overlaid things happening can sometimes... Oh, we found another terrifying altar. Fantastic. And we're under attack by hostile humans, it looks like. Is it just one hostile human? Huh. I have my sincerest doubts that he's going to make it all the way up here, but sure. I mean, assemble the army or whatever. Uh, Ian, get down here. Get ready for a fight. Eowyn, get down here and get ready for a fight. I know you don't have any armor on, so you'll go in second. Yeah, bicycle kick him just like that. And then we'll get our longbowman up here at the top as well to fire off some shots and defend the town. Not much of a raid. I don't know how... Ooh, right in the chest, too. He didn't make it. I, I figured that was kind of how it was going to go. Like, the longbows are pretty good. You kind of want to get the longbows done ASAP. They're pretty solid. And then from there, you can get crossbows. And then from there, you can get, like, a brown best that's like... And then you can get, like, arquebuses and little pistols. So you can have guys that, like, have a brace of pistol thing going on. Like, pew, 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 pew. Like, there's, there's some fun things to play around. Like, there's not an enormous amount of research and stuff in this game, but I think there are multiple tiers on some of them, too, which looks a little bit deceptive. So, like, this smelter one right here can be taken multiple times for, like, stacking bonuses. But yeah, this is uh, Grim Realms. Hope you guys liked it. 
It's uh, it's not I'm not going to say that it's the best colony survival game that I've ever played, but it is a colony survival game that has an odd sort of charm to it that reminds me of the very very early days of indie gaming like circa 2009 to 2011 where this is clearly a product from one guy from the things that are here and the depth of mechanics, like it's clear that he cares about this game. It's just little things like the UI can be kind of clunky, selectivity can be sort of clunky. Uh, it, it doesn't feel incredible to play based on the UI and everything, but if you can tolerate the weird little clunkiness and hijinks of the UI, it feels like there's some fun to be had here, especially if you like the idea of building up a colony to hold off zombies forever. I'll see y'all later. Thank you for hanging out, and that's all I got. It's time for me to go. Bye, folks.